Welcome to the Market Outlook video presented by MarketScholars.com. I'm your host, Brandon Van Z. It's August 10th, 2023. First of all, if you're new, welcome aboard. Remember to go over to YouTube, click subscribe on our channel, then go down below into the description area. Make sure you're signed up for our email distribution list, so that way you can be notified whenever these videos get posted. In addition to that, we're heavy users of X, formerly known as Twitter. If you're not doing so already, I would encourage you to follow me. My handle is at Brandon Van Z. We really appreciate those of you that click like and retweet on these Market Outlook related posts. And then last but not least, we do have a presence on Facebook. Feel free to join our group at that web address in the logo in front of you. All right, let's go ahead and jump into today's trade activity. Uh, and as we get started here, just a quick heads up, uh, we were just shy of hitting that 100 like mark there on X, formerly known as Twitter. Uh, so I will do my best uh, to uh, abide by my promises to you to keep this short and sweet today uh, of 15 minute video here. But uh, just a friendly reminder, if you are somebody who does prefer the longer videos, uh, that's how close it is. Just two more of you clicking like would have gotten an hour out of me here tonight. So in the end, if you like the shorter videos, great. Uh, no, no worries there whatsoever. But uh, I imagine there's probably a handful of you out there that are just choosing not to click like where you have every ability to do so. And uh, a couple of those times when you're clicking like along the way might get you uh, more free content out of us. So in the end, each one of you has to make up your mind or not to support us in that effort. Uh, obviously, we appreciate those of you that do, uh, but we certainly respect those of you that choose not to, uh, as long as you're willing to uh, put up with the outcome uh, of the shorter videos in, in return. So in the end, you guys will have to decide about that, but just wanted to make sure I mentioned that here. So we'll keep it short and sweet for you here tonight, and we'll see if we can get back on track for next week when I do the video on Tuesday. We'll let you guys decide. All right, let's go ahead and take a look here at our heat map today. And I'm using this heat map here on the Finviz website. And uh, that is free for everybody, by the way. So uh, it's just finviz.com forward slash map dot A-S-H-X question mark T equal sign S-E-C. Uh, not sure why the odd web address there. Nonetheless, uh, you can probably just Google it and find it that way as well. But it's it's a pretty nice heat map because not only does it allow you to see what happened today, but they have this drop down over on the left hand side here, which can also have you adjust the heat map to look at a week, a month, you know, year to date. You can look at some fundamental uh, metrics like dividend yield. So there's some some kind of handy features there that are not available on the Thinkorswim platform, uh, which makes it somewhat interesting. But as we look at the heat map for today's trading activity, notice that we do have quite a split between the buyers and the sellers that are out there. Um, there's um, you know more of a uh, of an even keel to today's trading. What was interesting about it is it didn't really start that way. Those of you that were with me this morning in my um, question and answer session, so I was teaching my premium members here this morning for about three and a half hours, and so uh, I'll be sure to. to kind of um, put that in the, the write-up in tonight's video as well. So for those of you that might be disappointed if you're only getting 15 minutes out of me now, you, you can have access to three and a half more hours out of me uh, if you're a premium member of Market Scholars, of course. So I'll make sure I get that link to you in the write-up tonight as well. But while we were in that class this morning, uh, the market was roaring. I mean, it looked great. Uh, we were up well over 1% this morning, and that was largely in response to uh, the CPI number. Uh, but as the day went along, uh, more and more stocks started giving up their gains. And while it wasn't a, a wholesale sell-off, uh, you can see that it was much more of a mixed picture than you would have assumed at the beginning of the day. Let's talk through some of the uh, important movers here. Uh, one thing that did uh, kind of hit, the, hit the, the, the news flow this morning, there was a pretty big um, merger announcement in the world of fashion. Uh, usually we don't talk about fashion too much in these videos because they're not major players in the stock market, but uh, today it was at least worth mentioning that um, it was Tapestry that bought uh, Capri Holdings, and those names don't necessarily mean a lot to all of you, but uh, they do own a number of fashion brands underneath of them, like Michael Kors and Versace and some other uh, well-known consumer brands, but they're kind of under the, the holding company's umbrella. So uh, that merger took place today, 
And um, we shall see if that kind of lights a fire under more consumer names uh, moving forward. But the big story from a market cap perspective today, or at least uh, what you would be led to believe if you were listening to the business news, was Disney. Uh, Disney was up about 5% here today, so a pretty strong performance. They did report their earnings after hours yesterday. And interestingly enough, I think the stock was actually trading lower in the, in, in the immediate um, aftermath of their earnings release. But as the conference call went on, uh, news emerged that Disney was going to be um, pushing through some price hikes of their streaming services. And so that kind of seemed to be the catalyst to turn the stock around in the after hour session and then kind of follow through with even additional gains here in today's session. Of course, Disney has been one of the major laggards within the Dow Jones Industrial Average here for the last few years. So uh, you could certainly use a bit of good news there. Uh, by the way, I did hear them mention again that they do plan on initiating a dividend later this year. Remember, Disney used to pay a dividend but cut it during the COVID time period. And now that um, you know the, the other Bob is back, it used to be J Bob Chapek, uh, but now the other Bob uh, is back and he's saying, we're gonna go back to uh, paying a dividend again. So who knows, uh, it's not an official press release yet, but at least they're still floating that idea. Of course, Disney is one of the rare Dow Jones Industrials companies at this moment that doesn't pay a dividend. There's only a handful of them in there and they happen to be one of them. So we'll see if we can get that news out of them later on this year, but at least for one day, uh, there uh, there's a little bit more enthusiasm around the stock up about 5% today. You'll notice that Netflix was up a touch with that announcement there as well. The other thing I did hear out of Disney is that they are planning on um, kind of clamping down on password sharing. Uh, they probably are, they're, they're, they're following the Netflix playbook with that because of course Netflix had the same issue here earlier this year and their stock really responded favorably once they allowed the analyst community to absorb what that might mean in terms of dollars and cents. I'd have a harder time believing that Disney has as many password sharers as uh, Netflix did. Nonetheless, maybe a small boost as a result of that as well. You can see that the uh, some of the consumer cyclical areas hold, held up nicely here today. A couple of the Magnificent Seven still closed in the green there with Amazon and Tesla kind of leading the way there. Tesla up 1.3%. Amazon up about a half a percent. The other uh, Magnificent Seven companies, you can see Meta was up 0.17%. Alphabet was basically flat up just a hair. Uh, you saw Microsoft up 0.22%. Apple was down just a touch. Remember, Apple has had a really rough re uh, week since they reported exactly one week ago on Thursday. They were down just a hair today, 0.12%. Uh, and then NVIDIA was the worst of the Magnificent Seven today, down 0.39%. Remember, NVIDIA was down quite a bit yesterday. Um, that whole AI-themed um, trend kind of seemed to, to fall off the tracks a little bit yesterday with some stocks like SMCI getting absolutely clobbered. Uh, C3 AI got hit hard. Broadcom has started to get hit hard. They're trading below their moving average again. And like I mentioned on Twitter yesterday, NVIDIA was trading below its 30-day moving average for the first time uh, since April. So they had gone on a tremendous run. Um, and today they stayed below it. So on that hypothetical question or the rhetorical question that I was asking on Twitter yesterday, uh, I said, you know, NVIDIA has only been below the 30-day moving average for two days this year, um, and the last time it only stayed below it for one day, will this time be different? We now have the answer. Yes, this time is different because it stayed below it for a second day today. Now, whether it stays below there in the foreseeable future, anybody's guess, but there has been more wear and tear on technology. Again, we're probably not going to be able to have an opportunity here in tonight's shortened video to look at the sectors, but remember what we've been looking at in my past presentations with you and how I've been pointing out that the technology sector has lost its bullish posture and it was a little bit of a head scratcher because many of the other growth and cyclical areas were maintaining theirs, but technology was not. They were actually falling out of favor. And then some of you might have noticed my post here on Twitter just a moment ago. Um, this was kind of interesting as well, where technology today actually has fallen so far out of bed so quickly, it actually put in an oversold cluster signal. So um, as I mentioned here on the post, um, this is only the second oversold cluster signal on XLK, the technology sector ETF, 
of this calendar year 2023. The last time we had one was in the first week of January. So it has had an incredible run, but the last couple of weeks, we've started to see some wear and tear on some of those trends there. So we wanna definitely um, pay attention to those and, and make sure we're observing those and make sure we're comfortable with where our portfolios are positioned as a result of that. So um, those were some of the, the, the bigger movers out of the mega caps that were out there. You'll also notice, by the way, Chevron and Exxon were both up today. Remember my trade application example with you guys on Tuesday was a bullish trade idea on Chevron. So we're happy to see that that one is working so far out of the gate. In terms of the losers here today, a couple of them do catch my eye. GM and Ford were in the news today. They were both down around five or 6% and uh, they're starting to have some issues with uh, their unions. And so uh, it seems like that's what uh, UPS was going through here recently as well. And that type of conversation is heating up a bit more as workers are demanding more and more and more to go to work. And of course, that comes at direct odds with the investors out there that want more profits. And so there's a tug of war that's ensuing and we'll see how it shakes out. But for today, uh, the, uh, the, the share prices of those two key automakers were down fairly significantly. You did notice a lot of the consumer staples were down today. A number of the healthcare stocks were down today. I just uh, posted something there on Twitter a moment ago about um, some of the uh, Medicare negotiated drug prices uh, here later this fall that might be pressuring some of those companies. Um, so all in all, uh, like I mentioned before, a bit of a mix type of a day that's out there. In terms of the specific numbers, you can see that 225 out of the S&P 500 closed higher today. So that was good for about 45%. So we had about a 45% uh, group of companies that were up, about a 55% group of companies that were down. And oddly enough, the S&P 500 was actually up today. So we had more stocks down than up, but the index itself closed higher. And again, that was because most of those Magnificent Seven that I just shared with you a moment ago closed in the green today. And since they are the bigger market caps, they hold a bigger swing way over the market. So we were up today on the S&P 500, but not by much. You can see just 0.03%. You can see what that means for our posture perspective. Notice the light pink background color right there. That is telling us that we have a weekly bearish posture, and this is now the fifth day that we've had that posture. Um, importantly, we are trading below the moving average at the moment for the second straight day. That has not happened in over three months, so that's another sign of wear and tear within the market. Um, you can see that the green line is at 55 and falling. So there is a possibility that we could head into the weekend with a dark pink background color if that line falls below 50. Notice down below, NASDAQ already has that. The NASDAQ was also up today, up 0.12% but it was not enough to reverse the posture using the intermediate line on the market forecast. We continue to trail lower with that green line and now that we are below the 50th percentile, notice the dark pink background color of the NASDAQ compared to the light pink of where it was before. And again, a big reason behind that is likely the technology sector. Remember the technology sector and the NASDAQ index composite um, are, you know, joined at the hip. That's where you get your more exciting growth stories. But right now, you know, some of those AI themes are kind of falling out of bed, as I mentioned before. So there's more selling pressure in there. So what was leading us just a few short months ago has now turned tail and has started to become a laggard in this market. Of course, I already shared that with you on Tuesday, so that should not be a surprise, but I know not all of you listen to these videos every single day either. So just sharing that in case you missed it, but we had already closed below the moving average on the NASDAQ on Tuesday. And in the last two days since then, we've continued to close below there. So there's more and more pressure stacking up there in the NASDAQ. Now onto the charts to the right, you can see that the Dow was up 0.15% today. So it, believe it or not, was our leader today. Um, but that didn't change the fact that we continue to have that weekly bearish posture that crept in there yesterday. Remember when I was last with you on Tuesday, I said, do not be surprised if tomorrow we go to a weekly bearish posture and that's exactly what took place because that green line did fall out of the upper reversal zone. The good news in this case as opposed to what happened on the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ is we are still above a rising moving average there. So the path of least resistance for the Dow does continue to go to the upside but we are now in a position where all four of our charts have uh, bearish intermediate postures with the NASDAQ with a strongly bearish posture. Notice that the Russell 2000 did 
cross into that bearish territory a couple of days back. So we already knew that on Tuesday, but we've continued to follow through with two more additional days of selling right there. We are now trading below the 30-day moving average on the Russell 2000 for the second consecutive day there uh, as well. And my time is up, that's 15 minutes. So uh, we'll keep it short and sweet for those of you that are out there that like those uh, quick hitter videos. I appreciate you checking out tonight's video. Remember, if you wanna get me back on track with hour long videos, all you have to do is click like. It takes five seconds out of your day and doesn't cost you a penny. So we'll let you guys decide that. Uh, whatever you decide, I appreciate you checking out tonight's video. I'll wish you all a wonderful weekend and we'll look forward to seeing many of you next week. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.